Let's break all of this down now with ABC's deputy political director Avery Harper and legal contributor Kate Shaw. Good morning to you both this morning. Avery, I want to start with you because there's some new polling out this morning on former President Trump's favorability with voters. And this poll was conducted after the indictment was announced, and it appears to show some good news for Trump. That's right. When you look at this latest ABC News Ipsos poll, what we find is that the number of Americans who view Trump favorably has gone up, while the number of Americans who view him unfavorably has gone down. You have to remember, before his first indictment, Trump has argued uh, that uh, criminal charges could boost his popularity, and that could very well be part of what we're seeing here. Uh, you have to remember his rhetoric of his campaign has largely been one of retribution, revenge, framing himself as the victim. And there's a segment of his base that is going to stick by him no matter what. I think that's part of the folks that we heard Elizabeth speak to. And his campaign is undoubtedly going to continue to take advantage of that. And Avery, on that point, it's been interesting to watch the other Republicans in the crowd in GOP field that walking this political tightrope, responding to the indictments while trying not to alienate Trump's base. How are they navigating all of this? When you look at recent polling across the board, uh, President Trump outperforms each and every one of his GOP competitors. And yes, this forces them to address uh, President Trump. Uh, so far, we've seen more candidates speak out and point fingers of blame at the justice system rather than at Trump uh, himself for these alleged actions. We've even seen one uh, candidate pledge to uh, pardon Trump if he's elected. And I think that's really reflective of the state of this race, right? These candidates cannot afford to alienate Trump's support supporters if they try to win them over later on as they try and chart a path to the nomination. Kate Shaw, let's bring you in on the legal implications here. How careful does Trump now have to be on the campaign trail? The former president, he's out there speaking frequently about the indictment, making accusations. Could prosecutors continue to use his own words against him in this case? Wait, I think that Jack Smith, uh, the special counsel, and his team of prosecutors are going to be watching former President Trump, now candidate Trump, on the campaign trail very, very closely. One of the things that was most striking in this very striking document, the indictment, was how central the president, the former president's own words, were in the charging document. So you have some of former President Trump's conversations with aides in, uh, as recorded in text messages and actual recordings, but you also had public statements, including back in 2016 on the campaign trail and from the White House, essentially Trump acknowledging the importance of safeguarding classified information, whether we're talking about presidential candidates or actual presidents. So that's central in this document. And I imagine that to the extent that former President Trump talks on the campaign trail about these charges, which we have every indication so far uh, that he will, um, some of the things he says in a political register could be quite problematic in court. If he takes the position that, yes, I did this, I had these documents, but I had the right as a former president to do that, that could resonate with voters, but it could be really problematic as an admission in a court of law. And, and Kate, the timing is critical ahead of the 2024 election. How quickly can the DOJ and the court actually move in this case? Wait, typically, a case like this would take probably a couple of years between the original indictment and the actual trial and resolution. And of course, that would mean no final resolution until after the 2024 presidential election. And so I imagine the special counsel and his team are going to be trying, you know, to the extent possible to move things along expeditiously. And this is a court, the, this Florida trial court, that has a reputation <coughs> as a so-called rocket docket court, uh, a reputation for moving things along quickly. So if the judge is willing to to essentially accelerate proceedings, that could mean we could see things happen on a faster than ordinary track. Of course, the defendant, former President Trump, is going, I imagine, to do things, you know, everything possible to delay the final resolution. So a lot is going to turn on how interested the judge is in moving things along swiftly. And so far, this is a judge who, in a previous iteration of a related case involving these documents, was very sympathetic to Trump's arguments against the FBI's search in the first place. So, you know, I, I think there was reason for the justice. Department to be concerned, but they're certainly going to try to move things quickly. And of course, nothing about this is ordinary. Kate Shaw, Avery Harper, our thanks to you both this morning. We appreciate it. And just a reminder, George Stephanopoulos anchors a special edition of This Week later on this morning on the fallout from Trump's indictment, including exclusive interviews with Senators Lindsey Graham and Chris Coons. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching.
and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.